This footage was taken back when my yacht got hit by lightning, which crippled all the electronics in the boat, whilst also blowing a hole in the bottom, filling it with water. I had done a temporary repair, filling the hole, but of course I had to wait for a weather window to get the boat back to a hard stand. This wait was almost three weeks, so without spearfishing, I would have been one hungry guy. Crazy times indeed. Just consulting my depth sounder. These low-lying tropical islands typically have a much larger reef surrounding them and within the reef a lagoon, which fills up on high tide. But as the tide drops, then all the lagoon water starts to rush out these channels. And this is where the predatory fish like Pubera hang out, also a group of two. Also, we are close to dusk and it's overcast, so it's fish feeding time aplenty, so some action is expected. I was worried about the wind that day, it was blowing 20 to 25 and it was offshore and basically if something went wrong with the boat, well I'd just be bye bye plucky, there's no way in the world I'm going to swim against 20 knots, let alone 25. And in the squalls, going up to 35, so I went on the other side of the KO, so if something went wrong, the boat would simply get blown onto the island and I would either walk it or swim and walk it back to the boat. My first dive here, I'm still in the channel, and it's more about just seeing the lay of the land. I'll drift along until I can see the shoulder and the drop off, and then make my strategy based upon what I see. I can see these fish here are nervous about something, usually this means a predator, so I think we're on the right track. I can't see the predator fish, but it's likely just near where the drop off meets the sand, or near some ledge, or some coral bommie just nearby. Now I could swim along the drop off and drop from there, but I'll stand out like dog's balls people and be fully seen by any predator fish below. And if there's more than one, the discussions will fly. So I'm going to try and avoid that. Let's do something better. 
I'm going to swim around up to the shallows and then make my way down to the drop-off amongst the ferns and fan corals and hopefully come upon the fish that is doing mischief down there and I'll visit my own type of mischief on it, people. To cover more ground, I'm going to go down obliquely back and forth all the way to the bottom, about 25 metres. OK, let's stop gabbing and let's start doing. I'm going to go down following the biggest ferns and soft corals and use them as cover. Nice slow steady glide down this slope, minimal movement, keeping to the soft corals where I can. And then with a bit of luck we have come upon a cubera that isn't even aware of us at all. That was lucky, I'll explain later why I reckon it had no idea we were there. Cubera are a curious fish, and provided you aren't being a maniac underwater, they may swim up to you. But when they are anxious near you, they may dart here and there at around the same time it takes you to aim, which can lead you to shooting a spot where it once was. I find it's best to give it a big lead and guess where it will go, and then shoot it well before it darts off again. Cubera are also called Canteen Snapper, Cuban Snapper, Grey Snapper and Pargo. Did you hear the thump in the water? With a big fish, it can get really loud. They are located in the Western Atlantic only, between Massachusetts and Brazil. These fish are generally grey or dark brown, but sometimes have a reddish tinge. The juveniles have vertical bands which disappear with age. This one just wants to play. Sorry buddy, I'm making a doco. You better nick off, because I might be getting hungry in a while, and then I'll be making a different type of doco. And you don't want to be a part of that one. They live inshore or near shore, hanging around ledges, little caves and overhangs. They live at the depths that you can free dive to. This much larger one is also curious and seems to want to play. Sorry buddy, I don't have a frisbee. They can be ciguateric because they are a large predatory fish. However, in southern Cuba and the Western Caribbean, there are no free swimming dinoflagellates or other algae that have the ciguatera toxin in them. Now check out this dive. Now this cave is a really nice cave, it's a cave that keeps on giving. So I'm just going to have to speed it up, otherwise this will take forever. And let's just see how stealthily we can go, and see what it's at the end. That is one big cubera hiding in one small cave. This fish is just way too big for me, and also its eating quality would not be the greatest. And of course, they don't like being chased at all, so don't even bother, people. Oh damn, I forgot the bloody gun. I hate it when I do that. They also respond to chucking up sand off the bottom, but in this case I make a complete pig's breakfast out of it all and leave the protection of the cloud too early. And the cubera is already on its way. And no, I am not going to do a following shot. Now we finally get to the cubera that I shot. There are no quick darting movements at all. It seems he is completely unaware that I'm there, and I'm lucky to be there at the right place at the right time. How big do cubera grow? Official records tell me 57 kilo and 1.6 meters long people. That is one big fish, although I reckon I've seen them bigger. Twice, in fact. Once was in three and a half meters, would you believe? It was a bunch of Elkhorn coral, there was a bit of a cleared spot, and there was um, lots of Gorgonia fans. I swam over, I didn't realize what it was, it was so big, it had its head partially covered with some Gorgonia. It saw me, by the time I realized and turned on the camera, and my camera's then, used to take three to five seconds to turn on, it had gone. And the next time, which is probably going to surprise you, it possibly was even bigger. Uh, I reckon it was bigger than uh, 1.6 metres long. It certainly had bigger depth, uh, I reckon, than my body. Uh, it was less um, like a snapper shape and more like a, a grouper shape because it was just immensely fat. And it was in one metres of water in the white water just off the surf zone uh, in Cuba. So there you go, I reckon it would have been closer to 80 kilograms. Now these big old fish would be tough old eating, be like a leather boot, uh, full of parasites. Remember, in my opinion, Cubera best to go under four and a half kilos.
So why didn't I take the shot? All right, let me give you some context. About a month and a half previously, we had just been kicked out of Cuba. It was the start of the COVID crisis. Uh, go, you've got to go. No discussion, just go. No, no discussion. Do you have food, fuel and water? No, go. So we left and we were running low on food, fuel and water because we were expecting to go to Jamaica within the week. Jamaica had closed its border for the second time. We couldn't go there. We tried to get to the Dominican Republic. Uh, we just got in there. They kicked us out. We, the, we then tried Haiti. They kicked us out. So we were a boat that uh, had no place to go. So I ended up staying on these tiny little reefs in the middle of nowhere off the Nicaraguan coast. One of the furthest was Barrio Nuevo, which was 272 nautical miles from the Nicaraguan coast. These places are in the middle of nowhere. No one, well, hardly anyone has even heard of them. Now you'd think, oh, look at these places. It must be teeming with fish. No, not at all, people. They've been hit hard because Colombia owns the group of islands. There's a whole bunch of them. And um, it's hard to police them because they can't always be there. And so in the past, fishermen have been hammering them hard and there's nothing left. To get up on any fish is extremely difficult. You have to be really good with your breath hole and really stealthy and above all, lucky. And I was lucky to come up on this grouper. I'd seen a couple before, but I wasn't going to take such a huge, magnificent fish that could maybe repopulate this place. Well, I'm hoping anyway, people. We weren't doing too badly. Yes, we were low on fuel, but there were lots of small fish and I was eating crab. We were eating crab and crayfish. So we were not destitute. We were not going to starve. And I'm not gonna go take a massive fish because well, probably three quarters of it would have been wasted. So I didn't take the shot. Well, that's about it for today. Don't forget to like it, subscribe to it, and press the bell button. We'll see you next week.